Konnichiwa, minasan. Hey everyone, this is Vicky a lot. 14? 13? Either 13.1 or 14.1. He's it's a bit, it's a bit skewed because there's a 17 hour time lag. So here it's day 14 for us. But back at home it'll be day 13. So I'm gonna say this is 13.1. Doesn't matter, it's our last day. Last day. We'll it's just call it last day point one. He's such a booty, that's It's been a while. Uh, this is actually the second time we're filming this because we were on those chairs right there with that beautiful view of the airport and Dana was zoning out way too much so we had to reshoot because most of it was just Dana going uh. It's awesome massage chairs, okay? <laughs> uh, so we're gonna shoot two videos here um, One is gonna be our impressions of to uh, to Kyoto we should have shot that yesterday, but uh, we were really tired and we were traveling and whatnot. And so much luggage, my god. Thank um, god. <laughs> and then the second video, which is probably going to be shot in the same place, maybe after a bit more con contemplation, is going to be our, our thoughts on Japan in total. Um, so, what do you think about... What do you think about Kyoto? Honestly, Kyoto... Oh, I zoomed in. Okay. Honestly, Kyoto was probably one of the best places I've been to, mostly because of the hostel we stayed in. Mm -hmm. uh, we stayed in Hostel Mundo Chiquito. Shameless plug-in. <laughs> and it honestly had some of the best people I've ever met. Um, in comparison to Tokyo, they were a lot warmer. It was party every night, <laughs> every single damn night. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was. It was a lot less hustle bustle in comparison to Tokyo. It was just calmer. A lot. I liked it a lot better. It was more relaxing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like we said, on our impressions of Tokyo, one of the neighborhood we liked the most was a laid-back neighborhood where everyone wasn't out and about moving and grooving. And I found that Kyoto was that neighborhood, just on a larger extent with more natural beauty. Um, the people in Kyoto were amazing, so friendly. Shout out to the amazing dangerous girl who's probably watching this. She knows who she is. Miyoko-chan! Um, it was really fun. The host of our hostel was like a man's man. Oh man, so many stories to tell. None I'll probably tell on film. So ask me in person, I'll let you know. Um, if I were to make a comparison, like Tokyo would be like a second year university student, like up and coming, drawing, ready to go, fashionable, you know. Uh, and Kyoto would be like the fourth year student, that's kind of like just slopping around, but still ready to have fun. <laughs> um, if you can, check out Hostel Mundo, Tokyo, uh, amazing place. What are some nice places in uh, Kyoto went to? Niju Castle. Mm -hmm. You guys saw that in the video log. That's pretty good. Uh, any of the shrines are awesome. Mm. We were actually supposed to visit a lot more um, places like the Golden Pavilion and the Funashi Inari, which is the Thousand Gate Tori. Thousand Red Tori Gate, which is like four, 40 kilometers. Something like that. Four kilometers. Four kilometers, sorry. 40. Four kilometer climb up the mountain, and it's each step is just uh, all the Tori gates. But we just decided to just relax on our last day and just be really part of the hostel. And honestly, it was probably one of the best choices we made. Rather than seeing mm -hmm. things, we just decided to enjoy it with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we were in Tokyo, a lot of the people we talked to, locals or whatnot, websites, forums, uh, or even people in the hostel. A lot of them told us that, that Kyoto is kind of boring compared to Tokyo. That's a bit slower, nightlife is not cool. And for those watching, I want to say that's totally not true. Totally. Um, uh, you kind of like, have to find the nightlife in Kyoto, but when you find it, it's pretty amazing. The atmosphere is so much more intimate. Uh, lighting is better. It's not as salt on your eyes, the bright lights. I mean, considering that also that we were with um, a native Japanese, like, you know, our hostel host, he was native, he was a native Kyoto, 
and um, the bar we went to was obviously part of the hostel chain so that probably played a part in as to um, how much more home year and how much mm. more open they were to foreigners as opposed to probably like um, a more traditional izakaya or even like a smaller bar mm-hmm. yeah um, the night nightlife in Kyoto it's kind of like what Dana said it's a bit hard to define it's not in your face on the corner there's no people out there solicitating their stores like you would find in Shibuya or Shinjuku that said you know if you're down to party and get rad you know get two birds stoned at once you would uh, go to Shinjuku or Shibuya or even Harajuku but um, if you want a real more like authentic taste of Japanese culture, I would say go to Kyoto. Like, my personal recommendation after leaving Kyoto is uh, you should do the majority of your trip actually centered in Kyoto and visit just neighborhoods in Tokyo after doing research. Just hit Pacific neighborhoods. Um, do the bike tour, too. Good, my God, do the bike tour. Um, yeah. I think a major part of why we enjoyed Kyoto a lot more was that uh, in Tokyo, those staying within the hostels expected an atmosphere of partying and it was kind of more English based it was foreigners just ready to rip shit up in Japan um, where in Kyoto it was more like we were openly accepted into a Japanese culture for like five days we lived almost as functioning members of that society uh, we cooked dinner, we helped cook dinner we were given dinner uh, we drank. Oh man, we drank. Uh, we were, like we were taught the language. We were shown uh, places locals would go that foreigners wouldn't know about. Cool places, shrines, uh, histories, like uh, Gorosan, the hostess, uh, the host, not hostess, ta- even taught us what's the difference between uh, a fake geisha you see dressed up and a real one. Yeah, like the fake Michael and the real Michael. Yeah. Um, if you see a Michael with cut lipstick in both lips, they're fake. A, a real Michael only has lipstick on the bottom mm-hmm. of their lips. So there's always going to be... I've read about it before too that there will be always... Because there's actually um, like play, play, um, tea houses or places that dress you up in geisha or Michael outfit. And then other foreigners, whether they're Japanese or non-Japanese, they'd actually take pictures of them and then they won't know that they're real or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kyoto, without an exception, is a home from home. I was actually, when I left Tokyo, I was excited to leave Tokyo because it was kind of cool to see a new place. When I was leaving Kyoto, even though we're heading back to Tokyo for a day and we could have done whatever we wanted, uh, I was actually sad to leave Kyoto. In fact, as we were walking out of Kyoto, uh, walking out of the hostel, the, the people in the hostel just stood outside watching us <laughs> for a good while. It was really sad and somewhat like nerve wracking because me and Dana would be whispering to each other, like, uh, can you look back, see if they're still there? <laughs> and every time we look back, they're still there. Um, yeah, so that's the final thoughts on Kyoto. Kyoto is the best place, in my opinion. It's awesome. Also, go to Osaka, but that'll be more in part two. Alright, bye guys. Bye bye.